the fan by Peter Abrams read by Joe Mantegna who's next Gil on the car phone what's shaking Gil dead air speak Gil is this go on hello you're on the jock am I on uh, not for long Gil the way we're going got a question or comment for us Gil first time caller fantabulous what's on your mind I'm a little nervous what's to be nervous just three million pairs of ears out there hanging on your every word what's the topic the socks oh, I like the way you say that how do I say it like what else could it be dead air what about the socks Gil just that I'm psyched Bernie Bernie's off today this is Norm everybody gets psyched in the spring that's a given in this game like ballpark mustard this is different how dead air uh, Gil I've been waiting a long time for what this year what's so special about it, it it's their year <laughs> why so tentative <laughs> tentative just pulling your leg the way you sound so sure like it's a lead pipe cinch the mark of the true blue fan dead air a gill yeah the Vegas odds are uh, what are they Fred uh, Fred in the control room they're doing something repulsive with a pastrami on rye 10 to 1 on the socks for the pennant 20 what what, what is it 25 to 1 on the whole shebang just to give us some perspective on this kill uh, what would you wager at those odds if you were a wagering man everything I owe oh hey I like this guy he's got a sense of humor after all but Gil you're setting yourself up for a season of disillusion my friend they went down to the wire last year didn't they ancient history Gil and now they've got Rayburn on top of it Rayburn Rayburn sheesh everybody wants to talk about the Rayburn signing he's not the Messiah good people he's not coming down from heaven with a Louisville slugger raised on high on opening day he's flying in on the team charter from Orlando plugged into his Walkman puts on his pants one leg at a time just like you and for Christ's sake she I can't say that on the air Gil and I can cut you off by pressing this little button right here don't the kids what kid he turns 32 in July that's middle-aged in this averaging hundred and thirty three RBI's for the past three years playing on that piece of watch it dung outfit can I say dung dung's okay th th they've got out there what kind of numbers is he gonna put up in the band box and with that sweet swing of his who knows check out the record on free agents my friend especially the happy-go-lucky ones taking home the cabbage he signed for not so sweet honey like swing or not why are you so don't get ugly Gil come on now fess up you honestly in the bottom of your heart believe he's worth what they shelled out answer me that dead air hello hello lost Gil let's go to Donnie downtown you're on jock radio Donnie WJOC 50,000 nonstop watts of clear channel sports talk 24 hours a day seven days a week 52 weeks a year what's shaking Gil parked his 325i a block from the office thinking too late of things he could have said to Bernie or Norm or whoever the hell it was order book and sample case in hand he stepped out onto the icy sidewalk Gil bought the sporting news at the ground floor newsstand and skimmed the training camp reports on the elevator. Ding. Five. Gil walked down the hall. Brigitte was at her desk unwrapping a bouquet of roses. She pricked her finger, said, Ow, and sucked on it. Hi, Gil said. Tickets in yet? Have to ask Garrity, said Brigitte. Gil entered the conference room. Sales meetings began at 8 sharp, second Wednesday of the month. They were all sitting around the table, the eleven other Northeast reps, and Garrity, regional sales manager. He sat down. Figueredo, area six, just west of his, rolled a tube of lifesavers across the table. How's the beamer? Figgy asked in a loud whisper. Figgy was stoked on Gill's wheels. Garrity's phone buzzed. He picked it up, listened, said, Yep. He turned to the door. O'Mara walked in. O'Mara was the national sales manager. He flew in from Cincinnati once a year, took them all to dinner. 
but a year wasn't up since his last visit, and it wasn't dinner time. O'Meara made a little beckoning motion with his finger at Waxman, at Larson, at Figueroa. They followed him from the room. Silence until O'Meara returned, followed by three people, white males like Waxman, Larson, and Figueroa, but not Waxman, Larson, and Figueroa. O'Meara introduced them. They took their places in the empty chairs. O'Meara moved to the head of the tables. Guys, he said, I've seen the figures. These numbers suck. Oh, I know what you're thinking. What a prick, expecting us to sell into this manure pile economy, expecting us to compete with those Japs, gobbling up the whole fucking business. Am I right? Nods from the three new men, various facial expressions from the others, nothing from Gill. Let's take the economy first. Does the expression self-fulfilling prophecy mean anything to anybody? His eyes fastened on Gill. Renard? Nope, Gill said, almost adding, maybe it means something to Figgy. You were going to say? Nothing. O'Meara didn't take his eyes off him. Let me give you an example, O'Meara said. Would you stand up, Verucci? Verucci's come up from Texas to lend a hand for a while in Area 6. Mind telling us your take for the month of Feb? Verucci named a figure Gill had never touched, not even when things were steaming during the Reagan years. Pay much attention to the state of economy, Verucci? Don't have the time, Mr. O'Meara. O'Meara laughed. Ignorance is bliss. He studied his audience. Still with us, Renard? Gill nodded, thinking, Texas, that explained everything. Enough philosophy, O'Meara said, which brings us to the Japs. He smiled. I think we finally got something that'll help you with them. He reached inside his jacket and pulled out a knife. It was a Tonto, about 11 inches, with a 6-inch blade and a red and white and blue checkered polymer handle. Ferrucci left the room. O'Meara took off his jacket, rolled up his sleeves, and passed the blade lightly down his forearm, shaving off an inch-wide strip of wiry, rust-colored hair. Ferrucci returned with a car door. Japanese, Gil wondered. Verucci laid it on the table. O'Meara opened his briefcase, took out a claw hammer, positioned the knife a few inches below the door handle, and began pounding on the pommel. Ten blows. Gil counted them. Too many. And the blade sank down to the choil. With a grunt, Verucci stood the door on end, showing the tip of the blade protruding through a speaker grill inside. O'Meara jerked the knife free. Say hello to the survivor, he said. A new line, someone said. The Iwo Jima experience, O'Meara replied. Doesn't that say it all? The reps hefted the survivor, ran their thumbs across its edge, balanced it on their index fingers. All but Gill. He just handed it on to the next man. But that was enough to tell him that the survivor wasn't state of art, or even an improvement on the rest of the product. Two or three grades below that. Better, though, than junk and maybe some buyers would go for that flashy handle. The survivor came back around to O'Meara. Who thinks they can sell this baby? Renard? Depends on the price, Gil answered, thinking, why me today? Thirty-seven seventy-five. Wholesale. That kicked retail to seventy, seventy-five dollars, even eighty dollars. Could the survivor sell at that kind of price? Gil had no idea. He didn't know why any of their stuff sold at any price. What's the commission, Gill said. O'Meara made a face, as though he didn't like talking about money. Twelve and a half. For a new line? Cincinnati thinks it's more than fair. Any objections? There were none. Then let's get it done. O'Meara picked up his claw hammer and left for the airport. Garrity handed out new catalogs that included the Iwo Jima line, gave them each a survivor for their sample cases, and wished them luck. The reps filed out. All except Gill. Tickets in yet, Gill said. Garrity looked up. No tickets this year, boyo. They didn't come in? Oh, they came in all right, and we sold them off to Marriott, Gillette, a couple others. But I already promised all mine to clients. Not entirely true, but he had promised some. You're making us look like assholes. Boyo, you got other things to worry about. Like? I'll let you in on a secret. You came this close. 
Garrity held up his hand, thumb and index finger almost...